please let me know in the comments below. I've got a little protective cover for the, the head of my Blue Yeti. So if it makes a difference to the audio and the echo, let me know. I don't think it does. I think I might have just wasted 13 quid on it. But never mind. Also, let me know in the comments down below which suite you think I look like. I'm thinking refresher maybe, or like the, the drumstick things, you, but they're not blue, but yeah, it's it's a cool t-shirt, all right? Leave me alone. So my GP video did really well. My Giampero Lambesi, or however you pronounce his name, Max Verstappen's race engineer, went down really well. I asked in the comments for that video, anyone else you'd like me to do a profile on? I've had a little look and a bit, a bit of bias, of course, but also someone I'm interested and actually learned quite a bit about in researching this. I'm going to be covering Andreas Seidel. Yes, the McLaren team principal. Andreas joined on the 1st of May 2019. And why, you might be asking, is this significant? Well, McLaren have enjoyed their best season for a while. It's their best constructors tally since 2012. So that's like eight years. And it's their first podium since 2015 as well this year. I know Carlos lucked out a little bit, but it was still a great performance. They still nailed fourth place in the constructors. Renault weren't that close in the end. It was like a 54-point gap. And a lot of the plaudits and a lot of the credit have gone down to Andreas. And having researched this, I can see why. Because this man is a serial winner. Obviously, Andreas runs the race team. That's the team principal role. Zach Brown is CEO. He handles the more overarching stuff. Stuff. It's actually Andreas who runs the day-to-day -day operations and makes sure. He, he is the, the biggest cog essentially. He's the biggest cog in the McLaren machine. And then the other, not quite as big cogs, but still very, very significant people who work at McLaren on the technical side of things. You've got James Key, who's technical director, Paul James, who's team manager, Andreas Stella, who's race director, and Piers Thin, who is production manager. And of course, it's been mentioned a few times that Andreas was signed from Porsche, their LMP1 project. He was headhunted, but I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that, but also a little bit about him as a man. So he was born on the 6th of January 1976, which makes him 44, in the city town of Passau in Germany. I probably butchered that because I pronounce most things wrong. Uh, interestingly, it's right on, on the border. It's South Bavaria. It's right on the border with Austria. And it's only about a two and a half hour drive from the Red Bull ring, apparently, in Austria. As for his studies, he studied at the Technical University in Munich before moving into motorsport, getting his break in the year 2000. And that kind of first break in motorsport was with BMW. That first stint with BMW lasted nine years, six years at BMW Motorsport, and then an additional three years at BMW Sauber as their head of track operations. Now, I rate this tenacity. Okay, so when he got his break, he was still studying. He was still a student when he got his break in 2000 with BMW. He got the motorsport director Mario Thiessen, Thiessen's number somehow because apparently that was just a thing and managed to secure work placement after calling him like three, four times and just basically harassing him until he gave him the opportunity, which just goes to show people watching don't see opportunities. Listen. It pays to be persistent. Andreas is a prime example of that. Look at how much success he's had. And it just came from him knocking on that door and not stopping, even when he was told to leave. So yeah, he joined BMW in 2000. He worked on their kind of power unit team. And it took three years, which in the grand scheme of things, isn't that long, really, when you think about it, before he was actually moved into a trackside F1 operation role, working as Mark Webber's engine engineer. He was an engineer tasked specifically with working on the engine. I think, I guess, does that make any sense? I think it, I don't know. And then as I say, he moved to BMW Sauber in 2006 as head of track operations. But unfortunately, that stint only lasted three years. The recession took its toll and BMW pulled out at the end of 2009, which meant that Andreas all of a sudden had gone from a career completely 100% involved in F1 in one way, shape or form. So out of a job. Fortunately for him, he spent the next few years hopping around a few different motorsport disciplines. He worked in the World Touring Car Championship and in the IMSA Sports Car Championship in the US before joining BMW DTM in 2012. Now I didn't know this, but 2012 was BMW's first move into DTM for 20 years. And what did they do? In their first year with Andreas Seidel at the helm, 
They only won and bloody won the whole thing, didn't they? They won the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship in their very first year. Now, obviously, this left an impression because within a year, 2013, Porsche had come knocking. They'd obviously seen his success and they were relaunching their LMP1 team for the first time in 16 years. Now, a lot is made of Nico Hülkenberg. Is he a chronic underachiever? Did he deserve an F1 play? Should he still be an F1? Regardless, there is a lot of talk always about his one success, his one main success that he is known for, winning Le Mans, and it was in a Porsche, and the team principal was, of course, Andreas Seidel. I found quite a nice quote, actually, from him, harking back to a, a 16-year-old Andreas back in the day, talking about where his love for motorsport came from. I was still at school, but thanks to Michael Schumacher, of course, my interest developed in 1992, and I was soon trying to analyse timing sheets from Friday practice sessions. The desire grew, so I studied mechanical engineering with a clear target to be an engineer in Formula One. That was the goal. And my word hasn't he succeeded it's actually really nice to see like he had this goal when he was 16 it's taken him a while but he's had a lot of success along the way he's finally got there he's a team principal at mclaren he's obviously like i say a serial winner this guy is different gravy this guy has delivered wherever he's gone he's done incredibly well you look at his past and he's smashed it so you know i consider myself a mclaren fan and reading this and researching this i feel very energized by the idea of, of, of Seidel kind of taking over and doing bits for McLaren because it sounds like he knows exactly what he's doing. So there we go. That's my roundup, my profile of Andreas Seidel, the man behind McLaren's resurgence, essentially. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please drop a like if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe if you're new and you want to see more. And of course, let me know in the comments below, again, who else would you like to see a profile on, a little deep dive, a little Tomo style coverage. Not to, uh, all, you're getting all the facts. You're getting you're getting the facts as far as I'm aware. I'll link my sources down below. I found a couple of banging articles that really helped me out. And uh, and yeah, if I've got stuff wrong, I apologise. Um, but hey, it's not. I'm, I'm sure Andreas won't mind. I've been Tomo. This is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel. Thank you very much as ever again for watching. Have a good one. Ta da.